All right, Fishaholics, so welcome back to another episode. Today uh, is a real spontaneous fishing mission. Uh, fishing in an area that I've never fished before on the Indian River. And I woke up at like 4.30, 5 a.m. this morning and uh, it just dawned on me that I really didn't have a plan um, on where to fish today. So uh, I just got out Google Maps and uh, started doing some browsing around and I found uh, this area with a bunch of really good, juicy looking uh, mangrove islands and uh, we're just gonna fish around them and uh, see if we can put together a bite. Uh, I did do a little research on this area and we have potential to catch some trout, redfish, and uh, also some snook. So those are our three main target species. And I've got a, a bunch of new lures that I also wanna try that I uh, got in a recent uh, bad fish box. So we're gonna try and put those to the test and just see if we can catch something today so uh stay tuned let's uh go see if we can find them all right so like being that i have absolutely no knowledge of this area we're gonna start off with a power fishing bait that we can cover a lot of work water with and work relatively fast so this is a drum beater spinner bait with a little paddle tail and uh, the water clarity isn't great so this will uh have a lot of flash to it and uh, send out a lot of vibration that'll hopefully trigger a bite. Oh yeah, that looks juicy. The tide uh, is gonna be low in about 30 minutes, uh, which is like 9.30. So we're gonna have pretty much an incoming tide for most of the trip. We might catch uh, the beginning of the outgoing towards uh, the end of the day. Oh yeah, that's money right there. Come on, fish, come on. What I like about this tide being so low. Oh, that was a good bite. I think we lost them. Oh, no, nope, he's still on. What could this be? Damn. It swam at me so fast. I thought he came off. Oh yeah. This might be a big redfish. If it was a snook, it probably would have surfaced by now. Staying deep. Oh, yeah. Please stay hooked. Oh, it feels good to finally hear the new VR ripping some drag. down dude somehow we snagged a stingray that's definitely a first oh come on <laughs> on a fast moving bait like this too that's crazy I wonder if he was just like right below the surface and we by accidentally snagging him or if he tried to actually eat it what a tease dude Guess I can try and put him in the net to see if we can remove this hook. I just gotta watch that tail. And you know what, maybe I'll bring him to shore. Okay. Let's see if what we can do. Pliers. This guy's got a big tail, so I'm thinking I could kind of pin it down with the net. 
and then just grab this hook. There we go, hook is out. Nice and easy. I'll bring this guy into some deeper water and send him on home. Like, it's a pretty big stingray, look at that. Now I'm happy and he's happy. <laughs> Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> Hooked that thing probably within like the first six or seven casts today. So uh, at least we could look at it as uh, we know we're not gonna get skunked today, but uh, let's get back out there and see if we can get some of the more desirable species. All right, well, we got that stingray right off this little mangrove point. I'll probably fish my way up to this dock up ahead. And then when I was flying the drone around, I saw there's a little creek mouth right over there that we'll check out. All right, let's see if there's anything around this creek mouth now. Hmm. Just saw something decent swirl right there. Could have been just a big mullet though. I'm gonna try standing up. Yeah, I can see the bottom, it's so shallow here. And you can see all the mullet spooking. Oh, this isn't even a creek. I thought it was a creek. It looks just like a little cove. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like the look of this here. We're gonna move out towards uh, that island right there and go all the way uh, onto the far side of it. And then there's another smaller island out even further that I wanna check out. Lots of grass. Hmm. I'm getting weeded up quite a bit. So I'm gonna try switching to this little hyperlastics dart spin on a weighted EWG offset hook. I think with this, we won't snag the weeds as much. And uh, before we cast it out there, I'll just put a little Procure on it. Mullet Procure. And I've never fished with this before or caught fish on it. And I like that it has a little cavity here that I can squirt this Procure into and load it up. All right, let's take a few casts with this and see if we can get some bites. Oh, that's money. And right here, it's basically 11 feet off this mangrove island, which is uh, pretty deep. So this must be a real steep drop from this shoreline. There's a fish. On the dart spin. Oh, we lost them. Dang. Mystery fish. All 
All right, well, we just fished, uh, I would say about 150 yards along this island and only the one bite, like right away, as soon as we started fishing, this little dart spin. Uh, I hate uh, when that happens because you think that you're gonna like develop a pattern and, and figure things out and then uh, and no other bites and you're just like, all right, now we're back to square one. And uh, I see that my leader got a little frayed up from that one fish that we had on this. So I'm thinking that it was pro definitely a snook. Um, but now I want to try this uh, new uh, Savage Gear, or Weedless Sa um, Savage Gear shrimp that I picked up from BPS. I thought it just looked so lifelike. It has a lot of movement that it definitely has to work. And it's got this cool little chartreuse paddle tail. And I think in this discolored water, it'll help the fish find it. Then they'll see the bait and they'll munch it. This bait skips beautifully. I would say it definitely skips better than the voodoo shrimp. All right, nothing here. Right there is where we had our last fish. Also a cool thing I forgot to mention about this bait is it has a rattle in it too, which is uh, pretty sweet, but uh, didn't really <laughs> help uh, or nothing really helped in this spot because I don't think there's a whole lot of fish here, but uh, we're going to take a look at this channel as we cut across, see if we mark anything on the fish finder, and then we'll hit that island. Really shallow along this island here. Oh, there's a fish. Nice. A little snook. Hauled out the Savage Gear shrimp and crushed it. Sweet. All right. Well, that's a start. Got a nice looking rip right here. Oh, there's a fish. What is that? Oh, it's a nice trout. Look at that. Big trout. Whoo! Heck yeah. Absolutely inhaled the Savage Gear Shrimp. Check that out. Wow. I only have half of my bump board here because it broke and it goes to 19 inches. So this fish looks to be about an inch and a half over 19. So I would say a solid 20 and a half inch or maybe 21 inch speckled sea trout. All right, so I'm gonna pop this hook out and get a nice release this gator trout. Well, we've been struggling to put together a bite now. It's uh, been two hours since we caught uh, that trout and uh, I spent another hour on that same flat thinking that we were figuring something out and we didn't have another single bite and I threw around uh, the shrimp for half of that time, then I also threw a little paddle tail and even a top water, and not a sniff. And uh, I also wanted to backtrack the same area that uh, we fished on the way to get out to that spot 
So we're on the opposite side now of this first island. We hit the back side when we first started earlier in the day. And then I basically just went all the way around and uh, saw just some ladyfish, uh, tons of bait, but um, didn't really seem like anything significant was on that bait. I also marked all the channels and uh, did not mark any trout or redfish or snook out there. And I did also fish along the shorelines of this island all the way out to here and it's just been really dismal but the good news is we've got one more island right there that's within range probably three quarters of a mile or a mile out there and the benefit of doing the big loop all the way around is uh, now we're gonna have the wind a little bit more at our back so we can get pushed to that island so it's a little bit easier of a ride and uh, if you see that island right there in the distance that's uh, the island that we caught the trout off of. So we're gonna hit that third one and then probably go back to that second island and uh, basically just hit it all again on the way back to the launch. But hopefully this third island has uh, some better potential. You know, it's gonna be out there further in uh, the Indian River. So maybe there's gonna be more current, could be a lot more bait uh, you know, flowing by and also could be uh, you know, some larger or more predatory fish so I'll see you guys out there all right so while uh, we're on our way to that island I'm gonna try just throwing out a paddle tail that we could troll because uh, it looks like this is just a big flat of about like two two and a half feet of water and that first trout we caught out of like you know one and a half feet 1.7 or something like that something like really shallow so you know maybe you know a lot of the trout here could just be randomly cruising around the flat and uh, we could learn that if we catch one on the flat trolling this long distance on the way to that third island and i'm gonna troll really slow basically just throw it a little bit out from behind the kayak and uh, let the wind push us most of the way and I'll pedal just slightly to keep us going ahead so we're not snagging any weeds. All right, we made it to the far side of this third island. I had one bite on the troll. <laughs> but it looks really nice and pleasant over here. I'm noticing there's a little bit more current. Water's a different like clarity. Hmm, got a couple uh, buoys out there, probably like crab trap buoys. I might have to go check them out to see if there's any triple tail on them. All right, I'm gonna clip the little paddle tail off and throw the shrimp back on. And if there's a triple tail on these buoys, he probably will eat this. I mean, live shrimp would probably be the best. Oh, got something on the, on the crab trap, a ladyfish. There we go, quick release. Dang. That got my heart like pumping for a sec to thinking that it was a triple tail. All right, <laughs> there's a little jack. 
that ate the shrimp off island number three. He really wanted it. It's funny, like this fish basically almost swallowed it. The trout almost swallowed it. When you put this in front of a fish, they really like this bait. But obviously there has to, there, you know, their fish have to be here to catch them. All right, uh, we've got uh, some more islands out that way. I'm just gonna kind of mosey out there. I mean, like this first one coming up isn't really even an island, it's just like a pile of sticks. All right, nothing on the pile of sticks. <laughs> So uh, we're gonna go, I don't know, just keep going. There's like a cluster of like three or four more tiny little islands. We'll uh, take a look at them. There's a fish. Okay. Feisty little snook. The way it hit for a sec, I was like, could that be a red? Oh boy. All right, pretty cool. Putting together a little catch. Well, at least we had a little more action out here by these outer islands, but um, nothing too crazy and uh, still pretty futile for the amount of cast that we're making and we're fishing a lot of good structure, a lot of good like current breaks. So being that uh, it's 445 and we're coming up on the end of the incoming tide, I'm going to try beelining it back to that spot where we got the trout, fish that hard for like 20, 30 more minutes, and then we're going to island hop our way back to the launch and hopefully that's enough to get one or two more decent bites so i'll see you at the trout spot oh did you see that fish just busted on some bait real tight into the mangroves there And uh, we're basically back right on the spot where we got the trout. And now I'm gonna skip this little shrimp under these mangroves, or I'm gonna try to. And maybe we'll get whatever that fish was busting on the bait. It's starting to rain on us now too, which is great. All right, I'm gonna put the camera away and bring it out once the rain stops. All right, I think the coast is clear. The rain just dumped down on us hard, but luckily there was this little opening in the mangroves. We were able to get some cover so we didn't get totally soaked. But uh, it is 5.41 now. So not a whole lot of filmable daylight left. Oh, just saw some decent fish busting through some of that rain bait. Oh, we might be able to get a bite on the popper. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
There he is. Ah, nice fish. Oh man. What do we got here? Oh yeah. Another big trout. Bigger trout. Heck yeah! Woo! That, that is what we were fishing for all day. Look at the popper just popped out. Oh yeah. Look at that. Stud trout. On the dark matter. Pulsar fishaholic popper. So sweet. Look at that gator right there. Oh yeah, what a beauty. Oh yeah, bigger than our first one today. This is 19 right there. I would say that's easily two or three inches over 19. So, you know, we got a nice 21, maybe 22 inch trout. I would say. All right, so I've just been dragging this fish for a little bit uh, to revive her so I can give you guys a closer look at this beautiful speckled trout. And now we're going to get her back home. There she goes. Whoo! Heck yeah. All right, uh, I am so hyped to have caught that trout because uh, it's about six o'clock now, the day is winding down and uh, the wind pushed us onto the flat where we got our first trout. But uh, about 50 yards over that way is uh, where we saw some fish popping on some rain bait and uh, we threw the pulsar popper in there and uh, that second gator trout just slammed it. And uh, it's been a struggle out here today, if I'm being honest, but uh, it seems like there's more quality trout here than quantity, which I'm okay with because uh you know at least uh you know we're not messing around with a lot of dinks we you know well <laughs> except for all the other stuff we've been catching today those have all been dinks but when uh, we do finally find a trout it's uh you know a 20 plus uh knock on wood <laughs> hopefully uh it stays like that but uh, I'm gonna do my outro now because uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to top that catch. Uh, you know, maybe on the way back to the launch we'll get some you know nicer. But if uh, we catch any other fish on the way back to the launch, I'll add it to the end of the video after this outro. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more. I will link all my tackle and equipment down in the description below. And uh, until the next vid, uh, live to fish, fish to live. Uh, not too bad uh, of a day, first time here. So I love exploring new waters. See you guys in the next vid.